Hey, I'm Travis Engel. I'm here with John Weber and Ryan Palmer. We're in Marquette, Michigan, riding bikes for the 2018 Bible of Bike Tests. And I have been looking forward to this bike probably for a year and a half, two years. This is the new 2018 Evo following MB. More, or better. It's a short travel 29er that is designed for rippers, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? Um, it has the same exact, G like, travel as the Ibis Ripley, right? Very different bike. Yeah, absolutely. Very different bike. But kind of similar on the uphill. I actually, yes. like, the Ripley, I thought edged it out for climbing efficiency and overall performance. I gave the Ripley a 10, but I gave this a 9. I thought it was really good on the climbs. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's efficient. Uh, you can lay down power, and it goes forward really well. Uh, it's, nice, it's got good traction. Um, and I, I think what little troubles we had on the climbs, uh, I think maybe we're chalked up to the tires. Tire spec on this bike is aggressive. It's got uh, this, you know, the, our build has reinforced E13 tires. They're rad, rad tires, right? Like very good in chunky, sharp rock situations. Mm -hmm. um, here where it's a lot, a lot of root, they're mm -hmm. not the, you know, it's not a very supple casing, right? Yeah. So like it did make the ride a little harsher. Um, we, didn't we didn't have the opportunity to test it with a different set of tires um, to have a different, you know, a better comparison between the two mm -hmm. bikes. But um, yeah, it's definitely like that tire spec definitely made a difference in the way, yeah. in the sensitivity of the bike uh, on climbs. Yeah, but it is a really nice climbing position. And on the downhills, those tires, I think, made me want to push this bike into the ground <laughs> yeah. and slam it into everything yes. I could see in front of me. But also pop it over stuff. And yeah. like I was hitting all the extra credit stuff and doing all that, but then mm. like there's a couple kind of shooty things that run you right into the sharp edge rock gardens. Mm. And I would just plant it through that stuff yeah. and it's just blah, right through really and that. yeah, no fucks given. Yeah. And yeah. it's really something that the Delta Link really excels at is having a remarkably firm platform, kind of, kind of, right where you want it in the rear end. <laughs> um, it's uh, yeah. it just has something that you can push against. And if if you're plowing or if you want to jump around, like you have something like like there to support you to to, to really mm -hmm. beat it up. So yeah. It, yeah. It, it's it's rad for that. And I was like, yes, like this is this this bike is a little longer. It has room for a piggyback shock now. It has room for bigger tires. And I was like, I'm going to mob this thing. And then I mobbed it, and I thought back to this whole year of riding all of these updated, modern, longer travel 29ers that just a few years ago were like, like really only for going downhill. Like, yeah, you'll make it up the hill. Um, or yeah, you can get around this turn, but it's not going to be that fun until you're straight lining down like, like a rock garden. Now, these bigger 29ers are really good at a lot more things than they used to be. So a bike, you don't have to get a bike with relatively short travel if you want a mob anymore. Yeah. That yeah. being said, I do think that this following MB is more playful mm -hmm. and more precise mm -hmm. than those big travel 29ers. And mm -hmm. a lot of riders in a lot of different places are really going to appreciate that about it. And there's a trend that's happening now where like all of the 120 29ers that we used to love, like the Fuel EX, for instance, um, are going with longer travel, right? And in a way, it's almost like to sort of like step up to the plate that the following already was up to, mm -hmm. you know? It's mm -hmm. like that bike felt like it had like deeper travel than 120, and it still right. does. 120 millimeters of travel, like it still feels poppy. And like when you start adding travel, you start adding squish and you start ad adding vagueness, right? Yeah. And so what I appreciate about this bike is that it's stuck with 120 and it feels kind of like a race car in that mm -hmm. way. Like yeah. you push it into corners and it pops you right back mm -hmm. out. Yeah. And that's what I like about it. And what's cool about this bike too is, you know, it's now more versatile than ever. Like, so they switched to a trunnion shock, which, you know, a lot of people are doing. It's not, mm -hmm. that's not crazy on its own. Um, but the, it's, they've created more tire clearance as well, right? So like you can now run it as a plus bike if you want to, which I've done and Travis, you've done. Cool. And it's rad. Like I switched over to the plus when my local trails started getting super washed out, you know, in the like late summer. 
and and I all of a sudden I had a lot of traction again. It was mm -hmm. awesome. A lot of bikes have that versatility now. This isn't a standalone feature of this bike, um, but it, it works really well in that mode. You can also put a 120 fork on it yep. if you want to steepen it up a bit and have a more like cross country feel. Although it's never going to be a cross country bike. Yeah, or like a more of a like East Coast, you know, flat but techy feel. Oh yeah, it'd be it'd work awesome in mm -hmm. like the Northeast where things are super techy but you need, you don't get up to speed, so yeah. you need those steeper angles. Yeah. How did you guys think it compared to like the, the Norco Site 29 that we also wrote on the same day? Yeah. The, the site is a little more, a little more calm and composed. Yeah, yeah it's, like a, it's like the safe choice, mm -hmm. you know, and then the evil is a little bit more of like a stepping outside the box choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would say to be, to be specific about ride quality differences, yeah. I would say that the Norco was more supple and stable on descents, mm -hmm. whereas the following, even though it really wanted to be smashed into things at high speed, ultimately felt a little more skewed towards the playful side for me. So it sounds like the following has stayed true to its mission. Like, it's playful, and it's capable, and it's still pretty evil. It's very evil. Yeah. Thanks for watching. If you want to check out any other Bible of Bike Test videos, subscribe to us on YouTube.